sin. God's angry. God's upset. This is exactly why God isn't moving in your life. This says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And the way he reconciled us was not to impute our sins unto us. Instead, he imputed God our sins unto Jesus. He put all of our sins upon Jesus and every rotten thing you've ever done, not only your actions, but that sin nature that was by by nature a child of the devil was put upon Jesus and Jesus suffered the wrath of God, was punished, put to death. The anger and the wrath of God came on Jesus so much so that he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You know why God forsook him? because he became sin. He goes on to say this right here in verse 20. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he, God, hath made him, Jesus, to be sin for us. Not just to have a little bit of sin, Jesus became sin. Some people think that I'm blaspheming God by saying that Jesus became sin. Jesus was the son of God. He was holy and he was pure. He didn't become sin because of something he did. It wasn't his actions, but he took the sin of the entire world into his body on the tree. First Peter two twenty four says, who his own self bear our sin in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Jesus took your sin and my sin, not, the ind- not only the individual actions, but the sin nature. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, but this is, this is important. Most people don't think this way. When I have people come forward and have them repeat a prayer after me, I'll always say something similar to this. Father, I'm sorry for my sin. And did you know every single time the people will say, Father, I'm sorry for my sins, plural. And that's not what I said. And I don't stop them and correct them. But you know what? You can't repent of your sins, plural. What would happen if you forgot one? (laughs) Did that mean it wasn't covered? You don't have to confess your sins. You will have people sit there and say, you have to confess your sins in order for Jesus to save you. That's not true. There's one scripture in the New Testament, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that talks about if we confess our sins, plural, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's one scripture, one scripture in the New Testament that tells us to confess our sins to God. Now, there is another scripture in James chapter 5 that says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. But those are separate from salvation. Neither one of those are talking about being born again. That's a separate thing. When you come to getting born again, in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, Paul was in prison and the Philippian jailer was going to kill himself. And he says, do yourself no harm. The Philippian jailer got a light and came in. And he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? John, uh, Acts chapter 16, I think it's around verse 30. And then in verse 31, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your house. He didn't say confess your sins and ask God to forgive your sins. He said, believe. Believe what? Believe that Jesus became sin. Not sins, but sin. He took our sin nature upon him. And you do not have to confess your sins, plural. What you do is confess, Father, I'm sorry that I have sinned, but you say, Father, I'm sorry for my sin, singular. I'm sorry that I was born in trespasses in sin and that I have a nature that's separated from you. I'm sorry that I was a part of this human race that violated and came against you. You are confessing your sin nature, not your sins, plural. That is huge. And if you understand this properly, when you get born again, see your sin nature, not sins, but your sin nature is taken care of and it is old and it is passed away and it is gone. And God gives you a new nature that is in righteousness 
and you are not separated from God anymore. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, then you're going to live under sin consciousness the rest of your life. And every time you mess up, you think I got to get that sin under the blood. You got sin, the sin nature and everything that comes from the sin nature under the blood. Not only the want, the sins, the physical actions that you had committed before you got born again, but all of your sin that you will ever commit was already dealt with at salvation and that sin nature was taken out of the way and you are now the righteousness of God. Man, that's awesome. And so, verse 21 again, For He, God, hath made Him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. There, there is a lot of people in the body of Christ who have accepted that Jesus died for our sins, plural. They don't understand that He died for your sin nature. And when you accept Him, He takes the sin nature and everything that came from it and with it away and it's forgiven. But they believe that Jesus died for their sins, but they don't believe the other part of this verse, that they were made the righteousness of God. And again, I go back to these verses, Romans chapter 5, verse 17 and 21, that grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life. If you believe that God gave grace to you, extended mercy, your sins are forgiven and you aren't going to hell. But if you don't understand that you got a new nature and you are now righteous in right standing, your spirit is perfect and pure and holy. If you don't understand that grace can't reign, it can't dominate, it can't rule in your life. You may not be under the fear of God's wrath and punishment the way you were, but you will never step into your authority in Christ and know who you are and what your rights are until you understand your right standing, your righteous position with God. And this is where the vast majority of the body of Christ is. They believe that they aren't going to go to hell, that their sins, plural, are forgiven, but they, they still think they've got a sin nature. They still think that every time they mess up, it's their own self-righteousness that makes God move in them. They don't understand that our nature is totally changed. When you got born again, there was much more that happened than just something on paper. That you are now officially saved, but there's not really any change until you die and go to heaven. And then you're going to be a new person. And boy, what a day it will be when we all get to heaven. You know, it is going to be an awesome time when we get to heaven. But right now, your spirit is completely, completely changed. And it is righteous and holy and pure. I'm going to share a lot more scriptures with you starting tomorrow on all of this and start showing you these things. But if you could understand righteousness, that's how grace reigns is through righteousness unto eternal life. Not talking about living forever, but unto uh, an, an abundance of life unto an intimate relationship with God where there's healing and prosperity and joy and peace and victory and all of these things. You've got to understand grace and righteousness. Put those two things together before you can experience the abundant life that God wants you to have. You know, I've said a lot of things here tonight that I know are just, uh, it's like overload for a lot of people. You don't want to get this detailed. But you know what? Unless you understand some things. I go back to the verse I started with in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue. It is our lack of understanding these things that is causing the problems that we have in our life. If you are truly born again, your little spirit's perfect. You are the righteousness of God. You are identical to Jesus in your spirit. The problem isn't your spirit, it's your head. People will say, well, I'm trying to get the word down into my spirit. 
You don't need to get the word into your spirit. Your spirit knows all things. First John chapter two, verse 20. You have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. Colossians chapter three, verse 10 says, put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. You aren't in the process of educating yourself and growing. Your spirit knows all things. Your spirit doesn't need the word. It's your brain that needs the word. You've got to renew your mind. You get transformed, it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, by the renewing of your mind, not the renewing of your spirit. Your spirit is instantly renewed at salvation. Your spirit is perfect. It's your brain that's the problem. Your little spirit's perfect. It's, this, it's what's right between your ears that's causing all of the problem. And so as painful as it is to think and have to figure something out, I think this will be well worth the effort if you'll just indulge me and come back and listen and find out about righteousness. It'll make a big, big difference in your life. Amen. You know what? If I wasn't born again, I would get born again after hearing this message. There's maybe somebody here that maybe you have been going to church and you've been trying to be good and you've been trying to do the best you can, hoping that it will be enough. Most people have a concept that it's kind of like one of these scales and here's your good works over here and here's your bad works and you just hope that your good works outweigh your bad works and that if your good is better than your bad, maybe God will accept you. If you've understood what I've said tonight, that's not what salvation is. It doesn't matter. Who wants to be the best sinner that ever went to hell? The wages of sin is death. If you have ever committed a single sin in your life, then that sin nature on the inside of you revived and you are dead in your trespasses and sin. And I don't care if you are better than I am or holier than I am. It doesn't matter. You have a sin nature. You are separated from God. And the only way to ever have a relationship with God isn't through you swearing off things and becoming better. It's by you humbling yourself and receiving the gift of righteousness and just receiving salvation. You have to be born from above. You were born a sinner. Now you have to be born again, righteous. And the way you do that, Romans 10, 9 says, if you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you have been trying to establish relationship with God based on your own goodness, Regardless of how sincere and diligent you are, you can't do it. You have to just receive it as a gift. If you've never done that, you can pray that prayer in Romans 10, 9, and you can be born again tonight. And in your spirit, you'll be totally changed. The rest of the Christian life is just a renewing of your mind and learning what took place on the inside of you. If you've never done that, you need to do that. And then once you get born again, you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because you know, the things that I've been talking about here tonight, this is not the way that a normal human being thinks. I've been talking about that in your spirit, you're changed and that you were born a sinner. This is not the way people think. You have to have the Holy Spirit enlighten you to these truths. It says in John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, when he has come, will teach you all things and lead you into all truth and bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever I've spoken unto you. The Holy Spirit has to give you revelation of these things. It's not something you can just figure out on your own. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which includes a lot of things. It includes speaking in tongues. But you know, the number one thing that happened to me when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit The Word came alive to me. The Holy Spirit wrote this book and the Word will come alive. I can guarantee you that if you have not received the Holy Spirit and if you don't speak in tongues, it's impossible for the natural man to understand what I've been talking about. I know some of you may not like that. 
And, but it's just what the scripture says. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And if you take that in its context, it's all talking about the Holy Spirit quickening things to you. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the number one thing that will happen is it will just transform your understanding. You will begin to get revelation knowledge. And part of receiving the Holy Spirit is speaking in tongues. And I know some of you are really disappointed to hear me say that (laughs) because you've watched me on television and because I don't spit and scream and yell and have a handkerchief wiping my fevered brow, you didn't realize I was one of these Pentecostals and you came here (laughs) under false pretenses. But you know what? I do speak in tongues. I've spoken in tongues today. I speak in tongues a lot. And whether you knew it or not, you are at a Holy Roller meeting. (laughs) And they are going to talk about you, so you might as well get something for it. Amen. (laughs) I'm telling you, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And somebody says, do you have to speak in tongues? No, you get to speak in tongues. This is a tremendous blessing. It's a privilege. Somebody says, well, I don't believe everybody gets the gift of speaking in tongues. Not everybody speaks in tongues, but it's not because God doesn't give it. If you receive the Holy Spirit, it's like a pair of tennis shoes. They all have tongues. Amen. (laughs) And I can guarantee you, God will give every person the gift of speaking in tongues if you will receive it. So if you don't speak in tongues, you need to receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. These are two things that every person needs. You need to be born again and you need to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. Is there anybody here who would say, I need one or both of those. Would you pray for me and help me to receive? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand and I want to pray with you and help you to receive. And we got people all over the auditorium. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, if you raised your hand or if you were supposed to raise your hand but didn't do it, would you just get up out of your seat, come forward. We're going to pray with you and we're going to help you to receive here tonight. Just come forward right now and stand right here at the front. No, (laughs) ma'am. Praise the Lord. And if you would, try and spread out. Instead of standing behind each other, stand beside each other. And the reason for this is because we're going to have people that come up and lay hands on you and pray with you. And it, it, it enables us to get behind and lay hands on people better if you aren't bunched up. So if you can, spread out across here. We've got all of this auditorium, and this will give our people room to come up and lay hands on you. Isn't this awesome? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I know there may be some people out there saying, well, I don't speak in tongues, but I'm not sure about this. Well, I am sure about it. So if you aren't sure, you ought to trust somebody who is. I'm telling you that this is a good thing. It's good for you. Somebody says, what are you going to do? I hadn't got a church for you to join. I'm going to give you a free book. I'm going to pray for you and give everybody a free book. So you got nothing to lose. You got everything to gain. We aren't trying to take anything from you. We're here to help you. So if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, somebody says, well, I believe I've got it, but I don't speak in tongues. Well, you know, it's possible to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and not speak in tongues. I did for three and a half years, but that's because I was a Baptist. And I had been taught that it was of the devil and I just was so afraid I wasn't going to speak in tongues unless the Lord made me talk in tongues. And you know what? It doesn't come that way. I'm going to explain some things to you, but you don't have to speak in tongues. You get to speak in tongues. It's tremendous. This will bless you. If you don't, if you don't speak in tongues, you should be up here. You know, the worst thing that could happen is you come up here and nothing happens. That's the worst thing that could happen. But you could come up here and you might receive and you might start speaking in tongues and this could transform your life. Amen. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Praise the Lord. 
All right, before I can pray with you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that Jesus is the one who gives the Holy Spirit. So you have to receive the giver before you receive the gift. You have to be born again. And I've tried to explain it many different ways tonight. But maybe you're a good person. Maybe you've been going to church, but you've been trusting your own goodness. And you don't really believe that you've ever been changed in your nature. You haven't been born from above. If you, if you aren't certain about whether or not that has happened, I believe that you, it hasn't happened. Because the Bible says that when you get born again, you have a witness in yourself and you know that you've passed from death unto life. It's not just something you're hoping for. You know that you've been changed. Is, is there anybody down here who's, who isn't absolutely certain that you have prayed and made Jesus your personal Lord? We've got to pray with you first and you've got to receive Jesus as your Savior before you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody who would raise your hand and say, that's me. And I want to pray with you first to receive Jesus as my Lord. Anybody? If that's you, I want you to raise your hand so I can pray with you. Here's one right here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Here's another one right here. You know, let me just say that out of this many people, this would be the most, this would be the only time in my whole ministry that out of this many people, there's only two people that aren't born again. I'm, I'm thrilled if that's the way that it is. I'm not trying to talk you out of salvation. But there's a lot of people just hoping that you're saved because, well, I, I'm a good person. I go to church. Going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than sitting in a garage would make you a car. If you're a car, get in a garage for your own protection. If you're a Christian, go to church. But going to church doesn't make you a Christian. It all comes down to that verse in Romans 10, 9. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. That's more than just saying a word. You are making Jesus your Lord. You're turning your life over. Doesn't mean you'll do it perfectly. It doesn't mean you'll never make a mistake because you will. But you're saying, I want you to have absolute control of my life. I want you to be my Lord. If you haven't done that and believed in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, then you need to pray with me and receive Jesus as your Savior. You can't receive the Holy Spirit until you do. Anybody else here that's not sure? Yeah, I knew that there were some others, amen. So I'm not trying to talk you out of your salvation. You just need to be sure. So man, this is like a dozen people or so. So I want you to repeat after me. This is not magic. It's not like if you just say these words, it automatically works. But I'm going to say words similar to what you need to say based on that verse in Romans 10, 9. And if you will believe this in your heart and mean it, then Jesus will come in and your nature will be changed. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Amen. I'd like, to, I'd like to ask everybody in here to pray with me. And notice as I lead you in this prayer. I'm going to say, Father, I'm sorry for my sin, singular. Amen. And tonight, maybe you will understand what I've talked about. So repeat it after me, okay? So let's everybody pray this so they won't feel like we're just listening to them. Let's say, Father, Father I'm sorry for my sin. Sorry for my sin. I believe that Jesus died to forgive my sin. And I receive that forgiveness. Jesus, I make you my Lord. I believe that you are alive. That you now live in me. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I am saved. Right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you believe that, then you know what? You just got changed on the inside. And the rest of this week, I'm going to be talking about what that means and what happened to you on the inside. But right now, you may look the same on the outside. You may feel the same, but I can guarantee you on the inside, you're a brand new person. And according to the Bible, every person who does this is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. It says that twice in 1 Corinthians. And so the significance of this is he made you to be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. This is what you were created for. 
So God created you for this. He wants to fill you with His Holy Spirit more than you want to be filled. So you don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. God's waiting. He's just wanting you to open up the doors of your temple so that He can come in. And if you will just crack the door a little bit and give Him a chance, the power of the Holy Spirit will come live on the inside of you and you will receive this gift of speaking in tongues. So we aren't going to beg. We're just going to pray. I'm going to lead you in a real simple prayer and we're going to welcome the Holy Spirit to come into our lives. And then I'm going to ask our prayer ministers, if they would, to come up here and these people are going to stand behind you and lay hands on you because the Bible says that when the uh, apostles laid hands on people, the Holy Spirit was given. You can literally release the Holy Spirit into a person's life by laying hands on them. So I'm going to lead you in this prayer, and then these prayer ministers are going to lay hands on you and release the power of the Holy Spirit into your life. And after they lay hands on you, I want you to quit asking God for the Holy Spirit and take a step of faith and thank Him that you've got it. I don't care what you feel like. He promised. He said in uh, Luke 11, 13, If you be an evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? It's a promise. So we're going to ask. They're going to lay hands on you. And then I want you to just start thanking God that He gave you the Holy Spirit. And at that time, after they've laid hands on you and you start thanking God, I want you to lift your hands like this. The Bible says that lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. This blesses God. It's just like when somebody sticks a gun in your back and you go, I surrender, I yield. And so after they lay hands on you, we're going to lift our hands, start thanking God. And then those of us who know how to pray in tongues are going to pray in tongues. And as we start speaking in tongues, I want you to switch from thanking him in English to thanking him in tongues and just start praying in tongues with us. And the Bible, the reason we do this, the Bible says that when you pray in tongues, you're giving thanks you're praising God in the heavenly language. You're bypassing your brain and you're coming out of your spirit. I've got a book that I'm going to give every one of you and it'll explain this. But if you're ready, you can pray in tongues right now. Let me just give one instruction here and then we're going to pray. The number one thing that held me back and most people is that people are waiting on the Holy Spirit to force you to speak in tongues. You just think he's going to literally take possession of you and make you speak in tongues. But that's not what the Bible says. Acts 2, 4 says, They spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance. The Holy Spirit doesn't speak in tongues. He inspires you. You talk in tongues. You have to speak. It's similar to me preaching tonight. I believe that God spoke through me. But if I would have just opened my mouth and said, oh God, speak through me and then wait on God to make me talk, nothing would have happened. He did not force me to say what I said. That's the reason it came out in Texan. That's the reason it came out in my personality. I spoke, but I believe the Holy Spirit inspired it. That's the way speaking in tongues is. You have to speak. You have to make sounds and by faith believe that this is the Holy Spirit. And after you get over the strangeness and the weirdness of it, you'll find out it just flows through you and you can be thinking about something else and yet you speak and it is inspired by God. But you have to speak. So we're going to pray. They're going to lay hands on you. You're going to start thanking God and then we're all going to start speaking in tongues. And as we speak in tongues, I want you to just join in with us and you begin to speak. If you don't know what to say, you can try and say what the person behind you is saying, but your tongue will be unique to you. It'll be different. It won't come out the same. And once it comes out different, just keep talking. Don't quit. Okay? Everybody ready? Are you ready? That was a question. You know, the Bible says believers will speak with new tongues. I want you to say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. And I will speak in tongues. Speak in tongues. Father, I thank you for all of these. Thank you for those who got born again. We believe that our nature was changed when we made you our Lord. And you said we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we open up the doors of our temple right now. And Holy Spirit, we want you to come into our lives and fill us with your power. 
give us this ability to pray in a language that's beyond our understanding and praying directly out of this born again nature. We ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. And now we lay hands on you and say, receive the Holy Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we loose this power to flow into every one of these right now. Thank you, Father. Man, there's a power of God. That's the anointing of Jesus flowing in your life. Father, we just agree. We receive this anointing right now flowing into every person. Now let's lift your hands and start thanking God that he did what he promised he would do. Thank you, Father, for giving me the Holy Spirit. Thank you that I am God-possessed. And from this time forth, I have the quickening power of the Holy Spirit in my understanding that I have this gift of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. Now, those of you that speak in tongues, let's begin to pray in tongues right now and just worship the Lord. As we speak in tongues, you speak with us. Quit praying in English. You can't pray in English and tongues at the same time. Don't speak in a known language. Just let's speak in tongues right now. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what it sounds like. You know, when a child first starts speaking, it doesn't sound like English, but that parent knows what that child is trying to say. Your heavenly father is listening to your heart, and he's inhabiting your praises right now. You're bypassing your brain. All of the confusion and the doubt that's in your brain, you're bypassing it and you're speaking out of this born-again spirit. Don't worry about what it sounds like. I've heard languages before that are nothing but whistles. Another language is nothing but clicks of the tongue. And yet it's a language. It's been translated about what it sounds like. Just praise God. Man, you're talking to God out of your born-again spirit. Father, we thank you. Thank you for touching these lives. Thank you for filling every single person. You can't talk in tongues with your mouth closed. You gotta talk, amen. Open your mouth and talk. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Man, many, many of these are praying in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Let me have your attention here for just a minute. You know, whether you spoke in tongues or not, I believe God gave you the Holy Spirit because he promised that he would. But until you speak in tongues, you aren't going to have the full manifestation. This really is important. It's a, it's a step of faith. It's, it's a breakthrough. It's like passing a barrier when you get to where you are willing to pray from your spirit and not out of your understanding. It is a major breakthrough in your life. And so even if you didn't speak in tongues, it's important that you do. And I believe that God gave it to every one of you. And I've literally had hundreds of people who've come forward, didn't speak in tongues right then, but they read this book. Nobody had more problems speaking in tongues than I did. Man, I struggled with it for years. But you know what? I finally got it. And I can pray in tongues with the best of them. And I wrote all of these things in a book. And I'll be glad to give you a free copy of this book. So... We want you to get the full impact of what's happened to you. And you've got to understand like what I was teaching tonight. So if you would, I'd like you to follow Robert right here. He's the guy way over here with his Bible in the air, waving it. And he's going to take you to a room and he'll give you a free book. We aren't asking anything. We're just wanting to help you. If you have questions, we'll pray with you. Uh, If you need prayer, people will pray with you. But if you would, just follow Robert. Praise God for these. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. You're welcome.
welcome, brother. Praise God. Man, isn't this awesome? God bless y'all. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hi. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Man, I believe this is going to change your life. I believe you're going to be stronger than horseradish. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. bless you. Amen. All right, all of these people that are left down here at the front, these are our prayer ministers. And some of these are partners. Some of them are Bible college students. But you know, all of them have been through a training with Ashley and Carly, the couple that you heard give the testimony tonight about their little daughter that was healed, Hannah. And Ashley and Carly now have seen hundreds, thousands of people healed, and they've taught these things about how to receive healing. It's not rocket scientists. It's just what the Word says. We've taught our partners and, and these Bible college students how to do this. And we have them up here because instead of me having to be the one that prays for every person, it's not me that does the healing, it's Jesus. And all we need to do is just act on His Word and believe God. So these people are here to help you receive. And so I'd like to give you an opportunity that if any of you need prayer for anything, it doesn't have to be physical healing, it could be anything, but if you would like prayer and agreement, if your faith has been stirred, these are people that want to stand and agree with you. So if you need prayer for anything, just come forward right now. We've got people standing at the aisles that are going to direct you towards a person so that everybody won't just go to one person. But if you need prayer for anything, just get up out of your chair right now. Come forward and let us pray. We've got enough people here that we can pray for every single person in here and give you the time and the effort that it needs for you. pray with us. I usually pray and call out healings and you're welcome. But if you need to go, of course, many people have already left. But for those of you that were nice enough to stay, you're free to go if you need to. Don't forget that we have tonight's message already duplicated on CD and on DVD. And it's available uh, for you out there. We'll be back in the morning at 10 o'clock, 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And then we have uh, 10 o'clock and 6 p.m. service on Saturday. Saturday, we start one hour earlier so that my staff can get packed up and to bed before 2 or 3 in the morning. So remember, Saturday night, it starts at 6. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just agree right now, and we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, we've all been healed. Just like Hannah's testimony tonight, Father, we know that it's your will to heal every single person. It is not your will for a one of us to be sick. So we stand here in agreement. You said we lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So we are here laying hands on the sick and we command 
these bodies to recover tonight in the name of Jesus. We rebuke all sickness and all disease. Satan, we break your power. We command you to get off of all of these people's sickness and disease to go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, the healing power of God, I believe, is flowing down here into people's lives. There's somebody here that just has pain all over your body. You know, that could come from a lot of different things, but I believe specifically that somebody has fibromyalgia, just pain in your muscles all over your body. Here's the healing power of God flowing towards you, and fibromyalgia is being removed right now. All of this pain is gone. Any person in here that has fibromyalgia, I'd like you to stand and raise your hand because there's a number of people already standing. Not anymore, but if that's you, I want you to stand, raise your hand so I can see who I'm praying for, and I believe you're being set free right now. Did you have pain before we prayed? You're already healed. So who in here had fibromyalgia, just pain all over? If that's you, I want you to stand and raise your hand. This lady's already been healed. Is there somebody? Here's somebody over here. Praise God. Here's the healing power of God coming on you. Father, we just agree. Anybody else, it can be more than one person. Father, in the name of Jesus, we command that fibromyalgia, also sensitivity to other things, uh, perfumes and different things, all kinds of chemical allergies. We break those things now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that the power of the Holy Spirit is flowing and setting people free right now from these things in Jesus' name. Father, we receive perfect healing. Pain, you be gone now. And don't come back in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody here was having pain right here in the, in the back at the base of your skull and in your spine and shoulders right here. If that's you, I want you to stand up and identify yourself. Here's the healing power of God coming unto you. Father, for all of these that are standing right now, I command this pain, whatever causes this, if this is an injury or whatever it is, we just command the pain to be gone right now. Leave their body. Get out of them now in Jesus' name. And Father, whatever the source of that pain is, we release your anointing to go to the root of this problem and to heal it now. Here's discs that are being healed. Somebody has pulled muscles in your uh, neck area and shoulders that go down to your shoulders. Here's these muscles being healed right now. Somebody's got a muscle or a nerve that's like a knot. It's all knotted up and that's causing pain. Here's the healing power of God right now setting you free from that. All of that pain leaves right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Father, we believe that this is happening. Right now, I want you to begin to move around. Do what you didn't feel like doing. I believe that here's the healing power of God flowing in your body. Praise the Lord. So who in here has already had your pain leave? If you've already had your pain leave, wave at me. Here's one back here, two, three, four, five, six. Anybody over here? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Man, there's a dozen or more people. You know, every person, I believe whether your pain left instantly or whether the seed is planted right now, that was broken over you. God didn't just touch a few people. I believe every one of you are healed. And you just stand on it and say, I got it. I'm healed. And I, that pain's leaving you. And I believe you're going to walk totally free of that. Isn't that awesome? Man, that was dozens of people healed right there. Thank you, Father. Somebody's saying, well, you were talking about this shoulder and this neck over to your shoulder, but my problem is in the shoulder. 
Somebody was saying that. Here's the healing power of God. If you had a problem with your shoulder, I want you to stand and raise your hand. Here's the healing power of God coming unto you. Stand and raise your hand so I can see who I'm praying for. Praise the Lord. Father, I just pray for all of these and thank you that right now that these shoulders are healed. Rotator cuffs are healed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Somebody's shoulder was frozen. He can't lift it very high. Here's the healing power of God. Lift your arm up right now. Stretch this arm out, and here's the healing power of God. And all of this pain leaves you now in Jesus' name. Father, we agree, and we receive these miracles. Pain, you be gone. Healing, you come now in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. That's awesome. I believe many of you are experiencing freedom from that pain right now. Who in here has already felt the pain leave? Here's people back here. Praise the Lord. Isn't this awesome? Man, lots of people. Lots of people. And you know what? Whether your pain left instantly or not, you're healed. You need to do what Ashley and Carly did and just stand on it and know I'm healed. Don't you leave here saying, well, it didn't work for me. God healed you. And I believe you're going to see the manifestation of that healing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we agree and we receive it. Man, here's the Lord healing hips. There's a number of people that you've just got tremendous pain in your hips. You've lived with this for a long time. If that's you, I want you to stand right here. Raise your hand and here's the healing power of God coming to you and God's going to heal these hips. If that's you and you're receiving prayer for this, I want you to stand and raise your hand so I can see who I'm praying for. Praise the Lord. Can you not stand? <laughs> I was just wanting to ask, amen. Father, we thank you. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I release your healing power towards all of these right now. And we command hips to be healed. Whatever's wrong, people that have bone on bone, that have lost cartilage, we command the healing power of God. Command cartilage to come into these joints. We command somebody's hips are being realigned. You had one foot or one leg that was shorter than the other because your hips were out of line. Here's the healing power of God touching you, and I believe that your hips are straightening out right now in the name of Jesus. We command this pain to be gone, this discomfort to be gone. Somebody's sacroiliac is out of joint. I had that happen to me when I was a kid. That was painful. Here's somebody being healed right now of that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we just release your healing power and command these hips to be healed now in the name of Jesus. Pain, you be gone. And Father, we release your healing virtue to repair whatever was damaged. And we receive that. Thank you for these healings right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Wave at me if your hip pain is gone. If you can tell a difference. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Man, lots of people receiving healing tonight. Lots of pain being gone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we agree and we receive all of these miracles here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's got an, 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 an anemia, anemia problem in your blood. You're, you're anemic. I don't know what causes that. I imagine there probably could be multiple things. But if you know that you've got a, an anemic problem, if you're anemic, I want you to stay in... Anybody else? Praise God. 
Father, I pray for all of these right now, and we command whatever has happened to this blood, whatever has made them anemic, we command that to stop now in Jesus' name. Father, I loose your anointing. I release your healing into their blood right now. Thank you, Jesus. God is touching the marrow of your bones. And your body is going to per start producing. Things are working out right now. We command that anemia to be gone. And Father, we receive perfect health, perfect healing in these bodies now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, you may not be able to feel this like those others that had the pain leave, but I believe that the healing power of God has touched your body here tonight. I believe that this anemia is gone. It's going to take a period of time for your body to recover, but I believe that this anemia is gone. You're healed of this. Man, right now, you need to go to rejoicing and praising God because this is over. You're healed. It's not going to be the way it was before. This is over. You're healed. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we agree. And we receive these healings now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Awesome. I tell you what, we're seeing a lot of people healed down here. A lot of people receiving the supernatural power of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we agree and we receive all of these miracles. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it looks like just about everybody is getting prayer. I'm going to let you go. Remember that we'll be back in the morning at 10 o'clock and tomorrow night at 7, Saturday 10 and 6. And then we have a meeting with the pastors tomorrow right after the morning session. And then on Saturday, we have a meeting about our Bible colleges right after the morning session on Saturday. Praise God. So thanks for coming. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>